now. Okay, I'm looking for Shalini. She's, She's here. here. Okay. I don't see her picture. Oh, okay, I got to change my view. Okay, let me do that. Gallery. Mm -hmm. There you are. Good. So I uh, thank you for changing the view. Okay, so I'm going to call <laughs> the roll. And Shalini Balmilne. I am here. Anna Devlin Gauthier. Anna, present. Anna, sorry. Okay. Anika Lopes. Present. Dorothy Pam, present. And Andy Steinberg. Present. Okay. And acknowledging the presence of Paul Bachman, the town manager, and Athena O'Keefe, our town council clerk. Okay. So um, I have a comment to make on the um, um, report that I filed at the last town council. There is a uh, omission, two names were omitted in error. And um, I will file, um, if I can, before I get home, the, a corrected version um, in the next day or so. But the, the two names that are missing, and I have just I don't, I don't know how, how they got missing, but it's some kind of Scrivener's error. Uh, for, a, for a term to expire June 30th, 2024, Deborah Ferrara and Freca Ette. And for a term to expire June 30th, 2023, Allegra Car Clark and Pat um, Onanabaku. So it was Deborah and Pat whose names were omitted. Um, so I will file the corrected report and your minutes are correct. Okay. So. Um, and the council's action was accurate. It reflected the actual action of the TSO committee, just to be clear. Yes. Because I think, I think Anna, for some reason, I remember hearing Paul saying that, that you read all the names out. Yes. When the, when the motion was done. So it's just some kind of a Scrivener's error. So, yep. okay. So now we look at our agenda. And I guess if you look at your, you'll see that you have, as a result of a meeting with uh, both Lynn and Paul and Athena, we got uh, three agendas put together. And um, I would like to take a minute or two to just go over it very lightly with you to see um, if there's something that we should add or consider when we get closer to the date. But so for tonight, we have rental permit fees. And I guess Rob Mora is going to be here. Um, we have lunch carts, parking fees with a summary from Andy. And he sent us some, well, yes, he sent some really um, interesting material, which gives a lot of background. It was very interesting. And then we to just dis uh, discuss a carryover item from CRC and Paul is gonna lead on that. Street closures are possible. It was possible street closures for summer dining. Uh, so um, any comments about something that you think should be on today's agenda, tonight's agenda? Uh, yes, Paul. Yeah, I just wanna note that Councillor Haneke is in the audience as well as Rob Mora and uh, Marion Walker, who's the chair of the licensing commission. So when those topics come up, you may want to invite them as, as is council president Grismer. Okay, and I will, um, Athena is the one that knows how to let them in. Is that correct? I, right. right, when the time comes when you are on the topic that concerns okay, me, yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. So is there anything else that should be, um, or that you would want to bring up for tonight before we get started on tonight's agenda? But well, we're gonna go over the other two issues for a minute. Okay, I see nothing. Then on April 7th- Joy oh, I have my hand up. Oh, um, yes, Shalini, yeah. as vice yeah, chair, could you please tell me when hands are up? I yes, of course, I, I'm happy to do that. Thank yes, you. absolutely. Um, so I just had a question about the agenda setting that, um again what are the criteria we're using to organize i'm not saying we should change today's but for the future for example like senior services was on our initial list or uh speeds uh the car speeds and we recently had had two accidents and mm -hmm. so to me those two items and speed and with senior services we've been getting emails with there are five thousand seniors who are you know, not getting the services perhaps, or it requires, you know, we need to look into that. Right. So how do I justify to people who come to me that why are you looking at lunch carts when there's only one per, perhaps mm -hmm. lunch cart versus looking at something like that could okay. threaten people's lives and seniors. So what, what is the criteria? The criteria were that um, Lynn and Paul knew what was on the agenda that had to be dealt with and should be taken care of right away or was ready to go okay so that is one point of view 
uh, I believe that the points you're raising are also very valid. So tonight, I, we will not bring those up, but you have the, uh, I don't think we'll get to those. But when we look at the next two weeks, again, with Paul and Lynn's input, because for example, on the lunch carts, we had, I received emails from the licensing committee because this was a piece of business that they were nearly finished. They were halfway mm -hmm. through and there was a sense it had to be done, okay? And we mm -hmm. hope to do it rather quickly. Um, and street closures for summer dining, again, a carryover item. So there was a, a desire to go through and carry out the memo and with some idea of our calendar. Um, Paul, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think um, Dorothy put these agenda previews on the agenda, so you could discuss that tonight. If there are things that you want to reprioritize, um, that this is the opportunity to that when you get to that agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Good. Um, and sometimes it's when are people in the in the town um, ready to do a report. So um, what we did, but concerned thinking about things that the that this committee had mentioned we, outreach notice is on the next agenda, April 7th. And please note that the meeting time, start time will be 6.30. We had been at seven because I think JCPC had a series of meetings that were overlapping with ours and it just wasn't possible to have them do that. So um, I was asked if I preferred 6.30 or seven and I said 6.30, but the fact is you guys, you can decide that, okay? Um, Andy, you have your hand up. It's on mute. Uh, there's one other thing that uh, I was just at the uh, TAC meeting as the um, council liaison to TAC, right, which right. was also, um, I was chosen because of this committee. They had a substantial discussion uh, today with uh, the planning department and DPW about the proposed crosswalk that is part of the grant that Paul has informed us about previously that would go from roughly Garcia's across to the new playground area in Kendrick Park. And it was a really extensive and very good discussion about safety um, protocols that might be built into it and how to make it the safest for all pedestrians, but particularly there are a lot of um, kids, uh, people who have kids who are parking in the parking lot of, um, that is sort of immediately behind and off of Prey Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I assume that eventually TAC, which passed a motion at the end of the discussion today, will present that motion back to us. And I assume that it then comes back to TSO. I don't know if Paul has any comment on that. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's ultimately it will come to TSO because it's a permanent change in the in the public way. And I don't know when the timing of that will be, but I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. That's that is very good. Um, so, so I can address that. So I think when I talked earlier, um, we we knew that the uh, the uh, TSO committee would be interested in knowing the recommendation of TAC and DAAC. And so staff were taking it to those two committees prior to bringing it to the council. Okay. So the two committees have, will have meet, the council discusses it, the council refers it to TSO, we meet and discuss it, and then we, it goes back to the council. Is that the process? Right, the, the council can vote on it that night or it can refer, it, it has the choice of deciding what it wants to do with it. Um, and we could, I suppose, do that at the same time, or at least in the same meeting that we discuss speed limits. I mean, they are pretty. This is a specific proposal for a specific yeah. crosswalk. So you can talk about speed limits on whenever you're ready to talk about speed limits. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, right. And so this outreach, the, 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 it's... The idea is to try to talk about outreach to see what the uh, three CPOs are doing and whatever, and then to get the input from our committee as to where we see ourselves fitting in and to see whether then in fact, Paul agrees that we do, whatever it is, wherever it is, but we have to really have this big discussion. So that's on there. Um, the water bylaw and regulations, um, 
and sewer bylaw and regulations. Um, okay. We've had a presentation on water, have we not, Paul? Mm -hmm. I get confused, but we haven't had one on sewer. Is that correct? Correct. That's scheduled for the April 4th meeting of the council. Okay. Um, so, but April 7th. Okay. So that'll be April 4th. Okay. Council, April 4th. Let me write this down. And then, uh, okay. What we are to do on this, what our input, what kind of materials we should be looking at, I mean, is kind of what I want to know uh, from you. Like, what do you expect TSO, TSO members to be thinking about when it comes to water and sewer? So these are very detailed regulations. The bylaws are relatively straightforward. The regulations are really detailed. So I think what you'd want to do on that first meeting is to have uh, Amy Rusecki, the Assistant Superintendent of Public Works, and Guilford Mooring, if he's it's really sort of Amy's territory, but they both can are conversant in it um, to present it. I think that you will want to have more than one meeting about it because you're going to have them make a more detailed presentation. If you have questions, you will have had them for some time a week in advance. Um, the water you've had for about a month now. Um, if you have detailed questions about it, you can uh, you can continue to have the conversation or just to understand it about what you're you're approving. Ultimately, you want to make a recommendation to the town council to approve or whatever you think you is your best advice to the council. Okay. Um, any questions or comments on that from the committee? Okay. Um, the TSO charge review, this was referred to us from GOL. They're looking at committee charges. Um, I don't think we're going to have too deep a discussion, too long a discussion on this, but that's something that we have to do. And again, there may be some appointments. Um, it doesn't look to me, I mean, dealing with Shalini's question, when do these other topics get on here? Is it possible that we could talk about speed limits on April 7th, uh, Paul, or is there room for that? Because um, so, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really <laughs> topic. It's a, it's, it's a major topic right now because we see the foot traffic increasing on Mass Ave. Um, it, it would probably be more appropriate for April 21st, which is when the town engineer will be here. And okay. he can talk to you about the limitations on what you can do with speed limits. You can't just choose to set speed limits. There are rules about what you can set. Right, right, okay. So, and it would, it would fit in with your roads overview as well. Yeah, okay, that sounds good to me. Any Anybody comment on that one? Okay, then April 21st, um, Kendrick Park hearing on any issues related to public way and finish recommendations on all items, Guilford. So that I believe is when we will also be going to, so over some TAC recommendations on parking, sidewalks, possible bike lane. Okay, so that can be um, a big meeting. And is this when we would also get the, it's on the previous page, um, the, the, we were discussing the TAC proposal that might be coming to us or is that too soon? So I think on the 21st is will be your roads thing. So you'll be looking at Kendrick Park parking, the roads overview. And then if the council decides to to refer the, um, the, the specific crosswalk on East Pleasant Street to the, to the TSO, that would be a good day to do that as well. But if the council may act on it, if they feel it has enough information to act right. immediately okay. on it. Right, okay. Andy's hand is up directly. We, oh, hi. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah. Andy. Uh, just one little thing on that. Uh, when we talk about speed limits, um, you were very uh, focused on Mass Ave because of the two accidents that have happened there. That may not be within our jurisdiction because that's a university road. Correct. Mm, okay. Well, originally when the speed limits were brought up, it wasn't about Mass Ave. So um, Correct. I'm not sure that was, was a fatality on a town road. I don't remember what street or road it was. Um, I know we're certainly gonna be paying attention to um, Amity um, in terms of the Route 9 uh, detour. Um, but, you know, actually the whole, the, the, I think that the speed limit should be dealt with, Paul, at the same time that we're dealing with details of the um, Route 9 work. What do you think? So I don't think there's anything on the Route 9 work that will come to this committee. Okay. Um, so the, the speed limit, I think what you, would be helpful for the committee is just to understand what 
role you can have with setting and speed limits. There, there isn't a specific proposal that I have seen that's that a counselor has said, I want to set speed limits at this rate. So I think it's better, it's, it'd be in, advisable for the, this committee to say, here's what we can do with speed limits, here how speed limits are being reviewed when we wanna lower speed limits on certain roads. I, I thought that Pat DeAngelis made a specific- Did she do a referral? Was there a referral? Um, it was a while ago. I, what, I don't, did TSO exist? I, I, don't I don't know what that's about. And it's actually, Paul, it's your next door neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's uh, somebody who lives on Northeast Street, um, a little um, fairly close to uh, the intersection with uh, uh, Main Street, uh, Pelham Road, and mm -hmm. complaining about um, the speed of traffic going in that first section and uh, uh, he's been complaining about it a while and uh, he managed to get the three of us who were running for council into the there was a fatality council. there was I was a, there was a meeting a man came to talk about his friend who a man who got killed and then Pat was very felt very strongly I, I remember that moment but I, I don't know and there was another the other one was uh, uh, where somebody was killed was uh, North Pleasant Street. So um, getting information from uh, people who know, the council referred the speed limits about three years ago from um, and to CRC and the CRC transferred it to TSO, um, utilizing a new state law that allows you to um, designate 25 mile, mile per hour speed limits, so. Thank you, Councillor Haneke. <laughs> what what happened? I mean, has this been dealt with and done? And no, off? it has not no. been addressed. No, I was on CS, uh, CRC at the time, and we had a presentation from Jason Skills, town engineer, and um, uh, Captain Ting from the police department about uh, the whole issue of how you can go about setting uh, speed limits what the um, discretion is that's allowed to a local community, uh, what the criteria is, and uh, then um, uh, the police side of it is, you know, is it feasible to enforce it once it's done? And it was a good discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to have that <laughs> discussion repeated for this committee. <clears throat> okay, um, Shalini. Yeah, and also so it was, um, there was a lot of discussion with, in our first council on uh, mm -hmm. 116. Uh, remember when we had meetings with uh, Rachel Green and, um, and uh, Pomeroy and yeah, so mm -hmm. 116. And then mm -hmm. once the potholes were, uh, were fixed on Station Road, people were complaining about the speeding. I'm like, see, the potholes were actually natural speed breakers. Mm -hmm. but now that we fix them, you have speeding problems. So Station Road is another one. So I'm sure if I go through my email, I can pick out for the next meeting, okay. I'll make a note to go okay. through it. Well, I will say on my trip down here, uh, I faced several instances of the most aggressive driving that I have ever had of, of people cutting in, looking like they truly wanted to ram people. Um, so I, I, I've read some, heard something else that somehow the tenor of the time, COVID angst or whatever, they're, they're blaming it on it, but that uh, people are not behaving well in their cars. Um, yes, Paul. So I think it's important. So as we looked at the agendas going out, we tried to manage the council, the committee's time. So we sort of set two hours as a budgeted time. So the, the committee's gonna have to be disciplined if you're gonna take all these new things there. Each right. one can take a lot of time. So I think we were allocating a certain amount of time for each meeting, assuming two hours is, is what you wanna achieve. Right. If it's less than that or more than that, you can say that. But then we should be saying, yes, um, Kendrick right. Park is going to take you know, 45 minutes, roads overview is gonna take 45 minutes. If you're gonna add speed limits to that, you're gonna, but I think as you manage the meeting, you're gonna mm -hmm. say, okay, the time is over for discussing this. We now need to move to the next one just so you're able to okay. take on what you want. All right, so then shall we proceed to, I, I truthfully, well, rental permit fees, I have no idea how much that will take, but um, we should get started. Um, lunch carts, I could say, what 
a half so an did hour. You, yeah, so did you want to invite, uh, I think, um, who are the counselors? We have Councillor Miller, uh, Councillor Haneke, uh, and uh, Rob Moore was here, but he's available if we need him. But I think the proposal came from those two counselors. And Rob is here. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you're talking rental permit fee. You're talking about, yes, he's listed and street closures would be um, Haneke and Haneke, you said is here. I haven't opened my thing up. Okay, hi. And Councilor and Miller. Yeah, and yeah. Miller. Okay, and which item is Councilor Miller working on? I'm, I'm tonight's the, thing. I'm, I'm this sorry. is the rental, this is the rental property rental permit, permit okay. fees. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. And I think the proposal is from the counselors. Okay, right. Um, so, Rob, did you want to start this off? Um, uh, no, I think it'd be better for the, the sponsors to, to start off, but I'm happy to help anywhere I can along the way. Okay, well, I will say, does anyone want to say something? I am not, I'm not going to give a presentation on the rental um, permit fees. Um, it's to me, it's a large topic. It took a long time. And um, if somebody would like to lead that, I certainly welcome them to do it. Um, uh, Mandy Jo. I would just say thank you for hearing us um, tonight on our proposal to change the inspection and permit fees under general bylaw 3.50. Okay. That bylaw gives the town council the authority to adopt fees for registration permit applications and inspections. And so the four co-sponsors have proposed fees. Um, and we worked with Rob, um, the building inspector to, you know, to get his sort of assent and agreement that this fee structure makes some sense. He'll be able to talk about that a little bit more. But what we wanted to do was actually institute a fee for inspections because there is none right now, as far as we know, as co-sponsors. Um, and then, you know, since this bylaw was adopted about seven years ago or so, um, I think it went into effect in 2015, uh, the fee has to, for registration to get a permit has not increased. It was set at $100 for all parcels, and it has not changed since then. Um, right. And so we're trying to start a differentiation of different types of parcels. And mm -hmm. so we're proposing keeping the $100 fee for um, any parcel that has up to six units with at least one of the units owner occupied as a principal residence, keep that at $100. And then for all other parcels, move it to $250. And you know that in theory will raise a little bit more money um, mm -hmm. for the inspections department to manage the rental registration program. Um, but the, the, you know, that money may or may not result in the ability to hire someone in the next fiscal year, but the goal is to be able to, through new systems and new things, to be able to potentially get more management, more, more people funded through this program to manage this program and to do enforcement in the future, but right. that th there's no guarantee that that could happen next year, but this is the start of sort of what the co-sponsors hope would be better matching the revenue mm -hmm. raised through this bylaw and this program to the required costs and expenses to mm -hmm. administer and enforce the bylaw. Right. So, um, okay, Anna. Jalani Sanders up for me. Oh, wow, well, I couldn't even see the contract. And I can wait yet. until it's time for questions. Okay. I just don't want to forget. Great, okay. Uh, Shalini. Yeah, I can. Uh, uh, could we get a sense from other college towns? What is their fee structure? Uh, because what I'm thinking in my mind is that smaller, home, uh, you know, smaller renters, and I think you have that separation, but you have the cr criteria that the owner is living in one of them. I like that. But then it might be that I am not living there and I have like two units for rent somewhere right and so to me going from 100 to 250 seems like maybe not fair to them and i wonder if there's like a third category right so you have one in which the owner is living one could be a still less than six units the renter not living maybe it's 150 or something and then 
the ones that have like a hundred units or like 50 or a hundred units, I mean, could we make that 500? I mean, I don't know how to set mm -hmm. the scale. So, which is why I was thinking if we could get a comparison from other towns, like we did for our parking as well, then that would give us a sense, like is 500 too much to ask once a year for somebody? Is this done once a year? Every year they have to renew it? Like the license? Okay, yeah, so once a year, $500 mm -hmm. for, Hundred units is that too much or too less? Okay, I th I think so, Mandy Jo. If I can call on you uh, or or Michelle, I think you did do some comparisons with other towns. So I give you a chance here to uh, answer that uh, Shalini's question. Yeah. So some towns, many towns and cities do not have a flat structure, um, but we are trying as co-sponsors to work within the current bylaw, which is problematic for not having a flat structure because right now the current bylaw all you're doing is applying for a license and you're as a as a property owner submitting your own inspection certification and so the work at as rob will say i don't want to put words in his mouth but but what he told us was the work for issuing the permit from the town side is the same mm -hmm. no matter how many units are there because the inspections are not done by the town. And so we, you know, that's the current bylaw we're operating under. Um, New Haven, for example, has um, different buildings, um, different unit sizes, buildings with different unit sizes have different costs, you know, so they do it by, um, by size of rentals, number of rentals on a property. Um, State College uh, is very similar that they they do it on a sort of one to four a five to 25 and a 26 um, type one. I'm, I'm not sure those are their exact um, splits, but State College, Burlington, Boston all seem to do a unit split with as you add the units in, each unit costs a smaller amount of money. Um, is the way some of those towns do it. So the first unit might be $100 for a license. And these are just examples that are not based on anyone. But then units two to five might cost $50 per extra unit. After unit five, you might be at $25 per extra unit. Um, so, you know, those, each town does it differently. And, and it really is based on the bylaw they have. And our bylaw doesn't and and almost all of those towns the inspections happen within the inspections department ours the inspections do not happen within the inspections department which is why we settled on proposing sort of another flat fee um system differentiated in a way that um we believed could be easy to administer the more complicated the more steps there are the more exceptions there are the harder it is to administer uh, before I call Anna, I, right now we have a system inspection only upon complaint. I thought that this new bylaw said when you apply for your permit, so the fee is for the permit application and inspection. Have I misunderstood? Um, so there is no new bylaw yet. This proposal for this set of fees is for the current bylaw that is in effect now. So what the council only. referred on Monday is a working, having CRC work on a new bylaw that may or may not come with a new fee proposal. But this current proposal that these four sponsors have proposed is for our current bylaw, which is fully self-inspection driven. So the fee is for the permit. It is not an inspection fee. Or is the fee, you, there's been a complaint and there's an inspection and then you pay it. There okay. is a proposal to add an inspection fee to in our proposal that is in front of you today. And that would be a fee upon inspection after complaint because that is a basically, okay. I think Rob can correct me, is the only time an inspection falls under this bylaw. But okay, the, I, I, I had written down fee for inspection. I should have written down fee for permit, okay. Oh, yeah, at least, okay. Anna. Sure, I just have a couple of questions. So this is, it's a little tough, right? Because you're, it's kind of like the cart and the horse, but they kind of need to cross at the same time. And so I, I do, I empathize with that. Um, and I, you're just pushing the cart, I guess. So um, 
the the things I highlighted. So the 150 inspection required under the bylaw, um, that is per unit, right? And so, you know, my like back of the map, back of the napkin math, there we go, was like in 2000, there were five over 5,000 units. So you're talking like over $750,000. Okay, Paul, you can shake your head at my math. I know there's more than that. I saw that. Um, so, so my, here's my question. It's my questions about numbers, right? Like I, uh, when you're looking at this, you talk about needing to, uh, that the fees may permit an increase of staffing. And I would like clarity on the path to the path that links those two things. Right. Um, and Paul, I know I asked you if this was an enterprise fund and I believe you said it was not. But I, I, I'm not. I'm, I need clarity on how it goes from fees collected to salary benefits, position on the payroll, et cetera. Do we have a response from Paul? You can correct my math too. It's fine. I know we have more than anyway. I think I'll just look to Mandy Joe. I think there's a clarification on the inspection is not um, required. Uh, that's only on a dem on demand. So okay. the fee is one thing, and that's so we are. Let's step back. We are looking at the existing bylaw that's on the books right now. Yeah, we're we're looking at increasing the fees for those that existing bylaw. Not, don't even think about the next bylaw. That's a different okay. topic. All right. So this is increasing the fees for the rental permit that people have to get every mm -hmm. year. That's a guaranteed fee, and then when there's a required inspection right. then there's that that's the 150 fee so you can't oh, multiply right. out the number of there unless we have an enormous number of inspections right. but that's but, not the case yeah. if there's no complaints then the inspections will all be self-certified that yep. as they did when they applied for their permit but this would be a step that we would do on the way uh, while we're waiting for the bylaw or the new bylaw that would increase the fees when people apply for permits which would give either going towards a fund or saving or, you know, allow some future staff increase, we hope. Okay, Anna. I still, okay, bad example, sorry, mixed them up, but can you still walk me through money in, position out? I can. So, Someone, sorry, I don't know who to send that to. No, I can, yes, I can do that. Um, so money in does not equate, it's, it's, it's not an enterprise fund, it does not equate to a new position. Typically what we do when we introduce a new fee, we give it a year to see what kind of revenue is actually going to come in. We, we, don't, uh, we don't budget for prospective income. So at the end of the year, we would look at, we would know pretty quickly this year, if, you know, when, depending when the rental fees come in, how much money we have. If there was a, an interest in adding a position with proven revenue, we would come back to the council and have to ask for an additional appropriation to hire someone. Okay. So the budget is the budget once once the council approves it in June. And then if we want to add anybody, we have to come back to the council to add that position. Right. And remember, there was an interesting fact in the presentation that although we know there are more rental permits there, the number of permits actually went down in the last couple of years. Um, Andy. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that, you know, I think the finance committee at some point would be interested in talking about this topic, too but the finance committee doesn't really want to get into it at the beginning because the setting uh, um, of a fee policy can't be in too many committees. And I think, and I think we sort of feel like that'd be too many committees. But the question that Anna is raising about whether the fee that's being in fee schedule that's being proposed um, connected to the policy. equates to the services that are required mm -hmm. to support and to administer the program is something that I think that we feel that we are interested in later in the process. And I, I will add one X last piece, and that is that I think we were thinking more in terms of the long term bylaw as opposed to the interim piece though, there may be a little bit of that too, just to make sure that on a budget side, what's being proposed makes sense, but we don't wanna be the proposers. 
Okay, uh, Paul. And just one more clarification. So typically we don't say this sum of money is coming in is going to this position. That's not how we run our government. We Money comes into a big pot and then the council approves it into in terms of general. Uh, this justifies adding a position because we have a new revenue source, but we don't tie it so that that position isn't tied to whether that revenue source goes up or down. Okay, and Michelle, I'm, I'm seeing you here now. And um, do you have anything that you wanna add at this moment? Or, no, no, okay. not exactly. oh, Welcome, but, but raise your hand, speak when you want. Okay, so the question before us then is a question working with the existing bylaw is, um, shall we increase the fee? Uh, Shalini had asked if there had been research as to what other towns had done. Mandy Joe responded with some information. I do remember reading some of that in the report. Um, it sounds to me as if whatever we do here is not gonna be carved in stone. It's a beginning, it's a start. There's a new bylaw coming. So um, we could see how it goes and you know, not have to make everything perfect as we go on. But that's just putting that thought in. Uh, I see your hand up, Shalini. Yeah, could you clarify, Manager Michelle, if when you said New Haven, Burlington, what, their uh, fee structure, did that include inspection or, because I was looking for parallels to what we have right now with the flat structure, like we don't have, we have self-inspection. So just for registration fee, do we know what other towns, other college towns especially are charging, maybe Northampton or where they don't have inspection, which is similar to us? So New Haven has a fee for the first two units, a fee for each additional unit. So the first two units are $200, each additional unit is $50. And that is the fee for registration, for getting the license. A second re-inspection or a failed inspection caused by a failed inspection costs $75 in New Haven and a failure to appear at a scheduled inspection costs $50 in New Haven. Some bylaws, and, and this is where we're basing this proposal on this bylaw. Most towns require the city to do the inspection. And when that happens, towns make two different choices, which we don't really have in terms of fee charging because we're self-inspecting in this town. One choice is to make the license fee at a cost that covers the required inspection by the town due to increase in costs per unit and all, and then waive the first that then do not have a fee for the first inspection or the reinspection if that first inspection fails, that that's sort of covered by the license fee. Other towns keep a license fee lower, but then add an inspection fee for every single inspection or even just a reinspection after a first failure. So there's a lot of choices any one town makes depending on how they want to run their fee schedule based, you know, differentiate between a license fee, what they want to include in a license fee and what they want to then include and in how they want to charge for a inspection fee. Since we self-inspect and our only inspections at this point are generally complaint-based, that's harder to make those decisions under the current bylaw, which is why the co-sponsors proposed the, by the fee structure they have. I'm just go. Oh, Anika hasn't talked yet. So I'm, I'm curious, forgive me if this has been covered because we've, there's been a lot going on. Um, so my question is around the self-inspections. Oh, I see you again. Um, how, how did we come to determine or, or lean on, on that as opposed to having, having an inspector or have this done by you know, some sort of, of management? Have it overseen rather. Rob, would you like to, to speak? Sure, yeah, so um, as, as uh, was mentioned, this bylaw was adopted in January of 2014 and 
the full year prior to that, uh, there was a working group that was established by the town manager that had representation. It was a big group, it was 15, 16 individuals, uh, staff, uh, representatives from the university, uh, uh, people representing the neighborhoods, uh, so we, and, and tenants uh, as well as landlords. And it really was um, from the very beginning when we set out what the goals of the program would be, it was really um, clearly decided at that time that we would be uh, not going into a full inspection program. We wouldn't be generating, creating a big staff to do this. And it would be a complaint only program as the phase one and you know something to revisit and look at in, in future years. And I think that was an agreement that was made you know, with everyone around the table, including very strong opinions from the landlord, uh, you know, community. Okay. Um, and we didn't have the staff to do inspections upon permit anyway. Isn't that correct? That's right. So when this program was initiated, uh, and prior, just prior to this program being initiated, we hired one code enforcement officer. Uh, that's about 10 years ago, uh, John Thompson, everyone knows him. Uh, right. He was hired for this purpose to start outreach education and being there to respond to complaints. And he today is our only position in this program and continues to uh, be the individual that responds to complaints and mm -hmm. uh, works with the university, the police department uh, and others to um, you know, help improve the, the situations in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Right, so um, Anna. Sure, I uh, have a question for Rob and maybe Paul. I'm curious, as you look at this plan, what do you anticipate the challenges being, knowing that there's potentially future changes in the future? Future, I'm so sorry, my brain has left my body. Knowing that there are potential future changes, what are, what are the things that are maybe showing up for you on this document that are, will need shifting down the road? Or won't? It, maybe nothing will. Oh, Rob. Rob, do I have to, to call you call on you to speak? I mean, I think you should just answer in a, in a normal way. OK, Please. OK, I'm not used to that in, in these meetings, but OK. Um, so I, I think this is, I see this as a, a phasing in a working towards moving away from a complaint only program. Um, and that really I see this as the first step. So if this were to be adopted at some point, whenever the decision is made, that it makes sense to bring on staff to start to build build that program uh, to something more with required inspections, different types of interactions uh, in, in with the landlords and, and neighborhoods and looking uh, differently at these properties, maybe a little bit of proactive work in ways that we're not able to do it now. Uh, so I don't think it would be anything we need to undo necessarily. Of course, if we do move into a very complicated um, uh, permitting program, the fees might not make sense anymore to be a flat fee. It might have to be based on some sort of unit count or inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the fees could be adjusted again, but I think it's, I see it as a step towards where um, maybe some of us believe we have to go. Good, and um, Anna, um, Thompson has come to some of our community meetings. And I think that this has been like a, a, a trying out period. It's been very successful. Um, and uh, kind of saying, what can you do is a way that you're trying to talk to everybody in a reasonable way. So at least we've only heard good things. So I love a trying out period. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you've got the floor now. I do have one more question. Uh, so the one thing that I think is, is um, I don't even know if it's missing because I don't know if it's appropriate to put in here, but we are seeing, this is the second time that we're seeing raises in fees that, have had a big long gap between being right or being changed, right? And so I would love to see a provision in here that they are revisited at a certain in, uh, interval. Um, if that's, I don't, I, and, and I don't wanna suggest what that would be. I'm thinking annual, but I don't know if that's too much given how much work this takes. So um, I would ask the, the sponsors to consider that and maybe to mm -hmm. consult with Rob on what would make sense in terms of how often to revisit. Mm -hmm. And if that makes no sense at all to do, Oh, just tell me. Sounds good to me. Uh, Mandy Jo. Um, I would just say now that it's in your committee, those types of decisions can be made 
as you vote a recommendation to the council, they don't have to come back to the sponsors for discussion. Um, You're giving me too much power. <laughs> I just okay. thought I'd mention that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so. I, I thought we could too. Good, thank you. Um, all right, so um, just to clearly restate this, what are we asked to agree to tonight? And I'm gonna ask um, Mandy Jo or Michelle um, to tell us exactly what we are to agree to or not to agree, agree to. From my perspective, I think that it's for this committee to look and discuss as you have what we've presented and then to make a recommendation based on what the committee um, feels is best. And so that could be not to um, promote this at all. It could be to promote it completely. It could be um, like um, Anna just suggested adding in some provisions. So I think it's totally in your um, wheelhouse now to be able to make whatever recommendations you see fit. And yeah. Uh, Shalini. Yeah, just to get a uh, sense of what's happening right now, could we get a uh, sense of how many complaints do we get in a year? And is there a certain trend or like where, who raises those complaints? What are the complaints about? Yes, uh, so Rob, I'm calling upon you to answer this. Thank you. Um, so, you know, not counting, say, the past two years, because our numbers of, you know, service levels are all off, of course, but um, leading up to that, prior to that, consistently, we responded to about 350 to 400 complaints annually. Um, there are a number of things that just don't get recorded. Uh, John Thompson has built really good relationships with a lot of landlords and um, you know, things happen even by text message, you know, there's a car on the grass, it needs to go, mm -hmm. you know, that's the kind of exchange that happens in some cases, and the time to put it into the system and, and report on it, you know, doesn't, I, I can tell you doesn't happen or hasn't happened in all those cases, but our, our service levels in mm -hmm. uh, all those prior years are somewhere around 350 to 400 complaints. Um, they're mostly uh, they're mostly complaints that come from the uh, either the neighborhood, the tenants themselves, or uh, parents of the tenants. Uh, you know, is, is you know where a lot of these complaints are generated from, and usually they have to do with um, building conditions. You know, so their their health and building code, fire code matters. Um, I think what um, everyone has probably noticed since we started this program, one of its big successes has been. Uh, the visual appearance, you know, on the daily, you know, experience, the, the cars are parked a little bit more organized. Uh, there's some signage, there's a little bit better delineation on the site. Um, so, you know, those improvements have happened as a result of this program. Um, we still respond to those types of complaints and we still use uh, parking as kind of our, our um, first way to investigate complaints or, um, you know, suspicions of over occupancy in a mm -hmm. property. Uh, so, uh, but most of them generally are health and billing code related matters that are found once an inspection occurs, uh, which is really one of the you know, reasons why we feel so strongly about moving this program to the next step is that uh, from our experience, from the things we deal with day to day, uh, we're certain that there needs to be improvement to the quality of the housing uh, mm -hmm. that's out there. Um, and it's not by far, it's not all of the properties, and, and but you know, it's more than the ones that were there only on a complaint, uh, mm -hmm. you know, request, and that's what we're, uh, you know, we're hoping that we'll be able to address someday. Yes, thank you, um, Andy. Oh, Chalini, did you have a response? Are you finished? I'm sorry. I can come back. Okay, uh, we can hear Andy. And, yeah. Mm. Uh, Andy. Oh, uh, there's one additional group of complaints. I think that. Uh, Michelle and Mandy and uh, the other two counselors have thought about it a little bit in the long term bylaw, but I know that John has talked about it to me several times, and that is uh, when he gets a complaint about a house and the rentals from the house, and then it is not even registered, mm -hmm. and getting going through the act of enforcing the registration 
uh, which is really complaint driven. Also, <clears throat> because the only way that he becomes aware of the fact that there's a rental that isn't registered is when he gets a complaint about the property. And uh, so then there's also the question of fees and fines um, that might make it, um, might strengthen the uh, system so that there's less of those situations. <clears throat> Right. I mean, one of the one of the issues has has always been the health and safety of the tenants. Um, and, um, you know, we pride ourselves on being a college town. We want to be a safe college town. So um, I think it's very important that we do have the system of rental registration and that we have. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm pleased that, uh, Rob, that you're planning to move towards more inspections. Um, because that will ensure I mean, one of the big one of the easy one, of course, is, is um, you know, the uh, the, the fire prevention, what do we call it? The smoke alarms um, that are not there. There's an, another area is porch safety. Um, students on a porch, gathering on a porch and porch collapse. And those can be, those can be deadly. Um, okay, do we have any other uh, questions or comments here? Um, Anika. Anika, I can't see the, the hand. Your background is, is too much like the color of the hand there. Okay, Anika. <laughs> Uh, so I have a, a twofold. Um, well, one would be, uh, oh gosh, I'm pulling it on. It went out of my head. It's going to come to me. <laughs> I'm so glad that's catching on as a phrase. <laughs> it's gonna, it's, it's going, it's coming to me. Oh well, first of all, I'm gonna just start here. Like I, I'm so, I'm thrilled we're having this conversation and grateful for um, the work that that has gone into this. Um, and you know, un understanding that we have issues and problems and need to figure them out. But I, so my question was um, for owner occupied, uh, owner occupied homes or units. What does it say for you know someone who lives on one end of town has a rental on the other, no complaints? Um, would would they well one would they have an increase okay so i guess that uh, okay michelle you had your hand up and then we'll call on rob or how, what, I, I, this is work? definitely something that we talked about um in okay. terms of you know differentiating between an owner occupied landlord and an in-town landlord um and it was sort of we had to just make a decision to sort of for owner occupied to have that reduced or I, I guess same fee um, and then to sort of keep it everything else in line. But I think it's an interesting point and it's definitely maybe Mandy wants to add to it, but we, we did talk about, you know, landlords that are living in town you know, maybe a few doors down or across town from another home that they own. And it's a tough call for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, and Mandy Jo. Yeah, I would just ask Rob to address the administrative issues with that. Cause I know that's when, uh, when we suggested some stuff, he, came, he mm -hmm. made some suggestions regarding administration issues regarding some of those choices. Okay, Rob, please go. Well, I mean, it, it, I think it's hard for us to manage that. It's hard for us to, um, you know, s establish a fee that would be different for essentially every property in that case. So it's a, it's a lot more involved administratively to build that program from the beginning. So we want to make sure it's worth it. Uh, I think, you know, as, as you, you were talking about this, um, examples in my head I had you know ones where I think oh it would be great to just reduce the fee for all the properties for this particular landlord or land uh, or property owner and then I had the complete opposite thought for other situations so uh, I, it wouldn't fit in every case you know so I don't think I could say one way or the other that it would be uh, you know um, uh, how how well that would uh, work, but you know I, what I can say is that there's no question that owner-occupied properties generate less complaints and less issues for us. That's absolutely uh, fact. And then uh, the majority of our, uh, our our complaints come from one to four unit properties. Uh, so it isn't the larger complexes that are 
uh, creating issues for our work, you know, for the things that we're dealing with, with code uh, enforcement and zoning enforcement. So the bulk of those are the smaller properties, which make up the majority of these, these permits anyway. Uh, but that really is where the, uh, the focus is for our work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and if I could, if I could just follow up. So adding the yes. blank, I'm not sure if I'm the only renter here, um, but you know, adding this voice as, as a renter, uh, okay. As a renter in a single family home uh, property without increase, I would ask that you, know, you consider the implications that could come down because you have, um, I know that you have a lot of uh, wonderful landlords, right? And their tenants included. And, you know, I'm just, I'm concerned also about a trickle down effect um, for some. Um, there are some people that this would really impact them. I know I was I was talking with a neighbor who is concerned. Um, you know, she has a set. She has um, a duplex. She's right next door, and she has uh, you know some wonderful tents that she has not raised the rent on for quite some time. And um, you know, she will have to. And also just the trickle down effect because you have. Um, you, you I mean, the, the rents here are comparable to other, you know, cities where there is a lot more opportunity in terms of, you know, various types of, of employment and also what's offered. So, you know, you have, you know, you do have a lot of very respectful, well-behaved renters that are paying, you know, substantial um, market rent. And, you know, these are people who, you know, could really be anywhere but, you know, choose to be here. So I would just, mm -hmm. you know, just be a little mindful. Like sometimes when you're talking about renters, you're talking about problematic renters or areas or homes that mm -hmm. absolutely do need to be addressed. Um, but, you know, you have a lot of folks and you have folks that are in subsidized housing that have no say really in where mm -hmm. they are, you know, so they could be like around areas that are, you know, seemingly problematic and, you know, they don't want to, live next to what they're living with either. So um, I just think like that triple, mm -hmm. trickle down effect, especially with folks still dealing with COVID recovery and, and whatnot would be nice to really just be mindful of that as well. Right. So just to clarify, um, a, if a person with a duplex lives in, is renting out both units. This is a non-owner occupied building, right? And so there are two units the um, rental registration fee now is what, Rob? And then what would it be? How much of an increase per year would this be? I, I thought it would be like just an increase of $100, but I, maybe I'm, I'm not good with math, so. Yeah, in that example, it currently is $100 and it would be $250 under this proposal. So it would be $150 more per year. That's right. Okay, so Anika, do you think that would actually end up with, um, I mean, it, it certainly could, it could add, you know, a little bit to the rent, but um, it wouldn't, at the, of course, but you're thinking of the, the, the new bylaw that's coming and, and wondering if there's going to be more fees and the inspection fee and whatever, I suppose. Um, there could be some increase. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, I'm clear that we're talking about an increase that would be before the new bylaw is created and then that would be worked out. I'm clear there. I'm just, um, you know, just in, in terms of like moving forward and how that is developed, there are going to be fees that are recouped and some some landlords mm -hmm. will eat them. But I, I'm just saying that for a la for landlords that they mm -hmm. may not live where their rental is, but they right. have no complaints, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they have, you know, they're running single family homes, which is um, seemingly the goal, you know, mm -hmm. as well of, you know, wanting to, they're doing exactly what the goal is and what so many people say they want, which is to yeah. Yeah. include, you know, you want people to come in, you want right. people to have, like, you just have to be realistic. They're not all going to be families are not only, always going to be two uh, person income, you're going to have one person in many cases, yeah. dealing with um, you know, market rent. So I think that it's just, you know, being just being realistic and make sh making sure mm -hmm. that we're, you know, we're having lines of exactly who of who all of our renters are, mm -hmm. you know, and we're not just putting people in a lump of students where we want to deal right. with behaviors. Right. But we're talking about 
in as in the small home that you're talking about a, a, a fee an increase of 150 dollars i believe okay just wanted to clarify that okay i think shalini you had your hand up and then um michelle did you want to yeah. respond to that oh and michelle can... please go ahead then good I, I just wanted to say that I, I sort of regret that we didn't include a comparison chart of other communities, um, but I can assure you that in the communities that we did look at, this was actually still really um, much lower, even in many cases, than what other communities are charging, and in some cases is in line with um, where we were previously or where we are now was is very low compared to other communities. Um, so I'm sorry that we didn't provide that comparison chart. I think that would have been really enlightening to see um, because it, it is it was clear based on my individual research and I think the other sponsors research that this was very aligned with what comparable communities like ours are doing. Um, so if that's any help at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, thank you. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to okay. say we're going to have to wind this up if we can. Uh, Shalini? Yeah, maybe we can uh, write down our questions and send them because I think having that comparison chart would be helpful for our next discussion. We can make a decision then once we have thought through this and write down our questions and and then and so we can move on. Uh, and I was also just thinking in terms of like who is impacted, right? Like, for, so Rob, I, on the one hand, uh, like, I guess I want to understand again, what is the problem we're solving for, which I'm hearing is, and, and I'm not talking about the ultimate bylaw, but right now with just this increase in um, registration fee, what is the problem we're solving for? And secondly, then it would be who is being impacted because I think Anika is right that most landlords are going to pass it down. You know, when I was renting downtown, every time the bid increased their rent or their fee, it was passed on to the tenants. So even though it's a small amount, it feels like fifty dollars. But it it was a huge shift for me to pay fifty dollars more per month. You know, so it can uh, it can be a huge impact on people. So what is the problem we're solving from with this with this increase? You did propose, Shalini, an increase that would be greater than um, $150 over a year is like Sure, it'll be less, but like still, like, $11. you know, for me, it may not be, but for somebody else, that increase may be a lot. Mm -hmm. So we had that, and just to keep in mind, like, who is being impacted by it? But he did, he did answer, what is the problem? The problem was health and safety regulations. But we're not changing the inspections at this point. So right now we're just talking about the increase. The permit, permit. Yeah, yeah the right. registration increase. So what? why are we doing that? Okay, so I see hands of uh, Mandy Jo. Um, one Hold of the on. reasons is that the fees oh, have okay. not been increased since the bylaw was enacted seven years yeah. ago. Um, you know, eight years ago now, it went into effect in 2015, it was enacted in 2014. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, costs rise, salaries rise. When this was enacted in 2014, the intention was that the fees would cover certain salaries. Uh, I did not ask Rob directly or Paul on whether they currently are, um, but, you know, I remember being in town meeting with the goal being that instituting this and then adding a fee would cover an inspector, a code enforcement officer would cover at least a part time um, administrative assistant. Um, and when you don't increase fees for seven years, yet salaries and health care and all of that go up every year for seven years, you're you're your original intent no longer matches what's actually going on on the ground. Okay, thank you. Uh, should I call um, Michelle or Rob? Rob, you had your hand up, please go ahead. <laughs> please go ahead, Rob. Oh, I was just gonna add to, you know, besides the fact that, you know, we, we set the rate, I think the town manager intentionally, purposely, meaningfully set the rate very low to begin this, this program with the intent to look at it in future years. I remember him telling me that, that we would revisit these fees um, and, and we've long passed that time frame. Um, what, we, what we're trying to solve here are a couple of things. One is uh, prepare for a transition to be able to do more. 
maybe more like the bylaw that the counselors are working on, or maybe more like the proposal that I have with the Board of License Commissioners to just make some little small changes uh, that we were pretty close to finalizing that would give us the ability to work differently with, um, you know, for lack of better term, problem properties, the ones that we see over and over again, or more than once in a year. And um, incorporating an inspection fee would be useful for us in those situations where we're, you know, making repeat uh, uh, visits to properties. And we have a very, very weak enforcement section, you know, for, for, for the real enforcement. You know, yeah, we can, we can assess fines and we can require leases and call for inspections, but we can't really suspend permits in any meaningful way for those, those very small number of properties that we would even consider that for. Um, when you have time and or we want to talk about it at a future date, really how the, the, the program works now with that level of violation, um, you know, years later, you makes you wonder why we did it that way. But um, mm -hmm. it, it's not really helpful in those really egregious situations. Okay. And Michelle, thank you, Rob. Uh, Michelle, you had your hand up. Rob basically said what I was going to say, okay. which is this is a sort of a stepping stone um, to, mm -hmm. to get you know, to get ready for a, 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 another change with um, the bylaw. I also wanted to say that um, we are certainly happy to take any questions or do any additional research that may be helpful and put together, um, you know, a, a little comparison chart so that you can see what's happening in other communities, if that might be helpful for the future discussion that you'll have. Yeah, can I just add one more thing then, and maybe Rob and maybe all of you is, like we hear a lot from seniors who paid taxes a long time and they're finding it really hard. And so are there ways to, um, like how do we make sure, like you said, there are a few properties that are the problem properties and then it's not the big buildings. I was thinking, let's charge more from the big buildings. And I know this is not an inspection fee, it's just a registration fee, which is the same amount of work. But just for equity purposes, we're trying to make sure that the lower income senior people are not impacted by this. But we also want to increase some of it because realistically, as Maddie said, and then we, we have bigger buildings that are making a lot more money. And so like with all these different pieces, like what is the right amount that we should be charging without impacting the most vulnerable people? Okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess I thought they'd done a good job of threading that needle, but uh, Anna. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that you threaded the needle well. I think my question is, you know, it feels like we're we're trying to find the line where people aren't gonna skip out on the registration process, right? And my question is, what's the what's on the other side of that? So Rob, you had mentioned some folks were getting uh, complaints about properties that weren't registered. Um, is there a, uh, a fine imposed for properties that we find out are rentals yes. that are not yes. registered? Um, and so how does that go along with, right? Like, so I, I think Shalini uh, prompted this thought of, of how do we make sure that we're, we're kind of balancing this so that we're not jumping so high that people skip it um, because mm -hmm. there's no repercussions uh, if, they, if they do, or are there repercussions? Okay, yes, Rob. Um, do you have an answer for that? Uh, sort of. Uh, I, I guess I, I think I just want to say that, you know, most of the cases we come across when there isn't, uh, you know, a registration in place, uh, the, the owners are sometimes even surprised to know about the program. So, you know, right. I, it, it makes me believe we need to spend more time. We That's, you know, part of why we need some more help eventually is that we really need to get out there again. And I think mm -hmm. we did a great job in 2014. I mean, we did so much work. We held, um, you know, meetings and gave trainings and mailings and all kinds of stuff for months before the program uh, mm -hmm. started, but it's been a long time. Uh, so I think we need to be able to continue to do that. And I think that would really be go a long way. Um, there's uh, another way that we go about finding re uh, unregistered properties, and we actually find them this way more than the way Andy, uh, the example Andy gave was that. Uh, we monitor the transfers. Uh, so, you know, if we see something like an LLC transfer or if we see a, a name that we know is an investor, 
we contact them and remind them. And, and you know, that always from our first uh, request, you know, we always get the registration done pretty, pretty quickly. So we never have to go to the point. We don't, we don't find properties. We, mm-hmm. you, you'll see in the annual reports, the fines are very small. There's multiple reasons for that. That's not really our approach to get compliance. We want to actually see the the money and the improvements go into the property and not collect fines. We don't want to spend a lot of time in court. We don't want to go to court for things like you didn't register your property on time and have Mm -hmm. to deal with explaining that or arguing that to a magistrate or a judge, you know, especially at that point, they probably registered anyway. So, you know, we're, we're, we choose our, you know, our path through the courts very carefully when we need it. And we have done it and we have assessed fines when it was, we thought it was appropriate. Uh, so I just hope that was helpful. To- yeah, it was. And, and I definitely prefer carrot to stick, right? I just, I think when we, when we were talking about the parking permit fees, we were worried that raising it too fast would have repercussions. And so I wanted to just make sure we weren't mm-hmm. doing that here where people would skip out on it, but it seems like this is not a major jump. You're not anticipating folks having Mm -hmm. so much of an issue with it that they bail on the whole system. Okay. Thank you. So in terms of of, um, our agenda and time, um, we are not ready to act tonight. Is that that what I'm hearing? Okay. Um, Will we, if we get the additional material, will we be able to um, do this um, in a reasonably amount of time on um, April 7th? Because we have a big agenda then. Um, we have to be able to move forward on this. Um, okay, Shalini? A clarific- clarification question. So if we have to make a decision on this, do we need a public, uh, whatever, meeting, public forum or something? No, we don't need to let people know that we're increasing this, like landlords or tenants or, I mean, it doesn't affect tenants directly, but it will affect them. Um, so- Who can answer this? Athena. Oh, we have to oh, do Mandy public Joe's here too. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Athena, we to, you're, yeah, yeah, we had to do a, we had to do a public hearing for the parking fees because that's in the general bylaws and our the council's um, policy on control and regulation of the public ways. But I don't believe that there's a similar stipulation that we have to do a public hearing for the uh, rental permit fees. Okay. All right, so that has been answered. Oh, do you have another question, Shalini? Yeah, just that if it's impacting people, I think it's good forum to let people know, landlords or just people. I mean, we already started getting complaints from people that, hey, don't increase it. It's going to impact us and whatnot. So it feels like it's good forum to find a way to let people know and get their feedback on this before we decide and at least have a good justification that's why the table a comparative table of other college towns and nearby towns would be really helpful to justify paul i'm going to ask you to arbitrate mm-hmm. on this so i think what athena said is you don't there's no requirement for a public hearing how you make your decision if you want to engage the public in a different way that's up to the to the committee um you know, I don't, there's nothing in the rules of procedure that requires it. Well, um, I, I would, I would suggest that in the interest of, of moving forward with our agenda, uh, we've had a full discussion. Uh, the fee increase for at this moment is, is a modest increase, which would not have a, a major impact, I don't believe. Um, and this is part of a process where they're trying to see how things go. So I, I don't see the necessity for a public hearing. Um, like, you know, if we had world enough in time, but we don't. Uh, Paul, your hand is up. I do want to recognize that Anika has her hand up, but I oh, can speak you. after her. Thank you, Anika, please. I was just going to ask that if we are not going to have a public forum, what are we waiting for? Um, to go ahead and vote on a referral. Okay. Um, all right. So 
that is a, is an interesting position. And Paul, do you have something to say now too? Yeah, the only thing I was going to add is that if you whatever you decide, think that you know you may be setting a precedent for how you handle things. You you don't think you can go back and forth, say hearing for this because it's not that much, hearing for that. It's it's we think it's a little bit more. I think you should be consistent in how you present things to the public. Well, um, that's okay, Anna. Sure. So I mean, we are town services and outreach. So every single thing we do is going to impact the public. And so I agree with what Paul said. I think I I really, I appreciate the spirit of what you're saying, Shalini. And I think that if, in my mind, if we start doing this, it's gonna be, we're only gonna spend our time on public hearings and we won't get to uh, half the things that we are trying to get to. So I that's my current thought to Anika's point. Um, if we can add a provision saying every three years this is revisited, then I'm comfortable okay. moving on it as well. Can I just okay. respond to that? I wasn't saying that we need a public hearing necessarily, but we need a way to inform people. So maybe in the bulletin board or something so that when we're discussing it, just as people coming in as public comment, they could come and make a comment, but we need to at least let the information out. Because when I shared it in my newsletter, a couple of people said that they had not even heard that this was being discussed. And they were grateful that they heard about it. I so okay. uh, I think it's important to, even if you don't have a public forum, to I, on the town con, on the town website page or the bulletin board or whatever we have, mm -hmm. to let people know that this is on our agenda. Please come and share your public comments. How is this different from everything we talk about? Uh, I'm, 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 this is asked really just because I don't understand. Um, Everything we talk about, as Anna says, affects people. Um, and I began noticing that except for a few issues, we're getting fewer people attending whenever we have a, a hearing. We had nobody attend the last one because the, the and, and we counselors are getting exhausted because we have so many issues and so many meetings that, um, I think when it affects people's money or but they're paying for rent anytime it affects them directly, that might be a reason to, that could be one of the criteria where we make an extra effort. Okay, I mean, for well, you, maybe I, I don't $50. feel qualified to answer this, so I'm going yeah. to leave it to others to answer this, okay? Uh, Anna. I think we're straying away from what we're talking about and a little bit into outreach. And so I wanna keep us focused because if we're talking really generally, which we, I think we need to do. Um, we want to make sure the public knows that we're talking about general outreach, right? So, it, so I, I want to keep us a little bit, if that's okay, focused on this issue. I mean, Shalini, to your point, I, and again, like, I'm not saying what we're doing is, is reaching the audience we need to, but this agenda item was on the town website underneath the TSO meeting, right? So I think that there's there, there are improved ways to do it. And it's not that it's not out there. It's just not out there in a way that's reaching people. So, mm -hmm. so I think that that to me feels like a conversation for our outreach when we, when we talk about mm -hmm. outreach. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, as a broader discussion. We can leave it for outreach right now. We're talking about this particular agenda item that in the next meeting, we're going to talk about increasing something that may not affect you or me, but there are people we're hearing from already. I don't know if you're getting those emails, but I'm getting emails that are saying that we're concerned about the increase in registration fees. So it sounds like people are worried about it. And if you're hearing from few, that means other people are also worried about it or it might impact them. So I'm not saying we have a public forum, but at least have things that are gonna impact people uh, which is different from the agenda because we're doing a lot of discussions. I'm not saying every discussion item should be in the bulletin board on the town website because it's under agenda. But when we're making a decision about something that's going to impact them, just like parking fee was going to impact a few people, but we had a public forum because it was required. This is not required, but it is going to have a direct impact on people. So I just feel having a mention on the bulletin board that please come to that, I think it makes sense to do that. Okay, That's well, part of the transparent government we're running. Okay, uh, if you have a hearing or a forum where you have to pay for advertisements and newspapers yes. and, yes. and to think several weeks in advance, uh, I don't know how to use the bulletin board. Uh, I would say perhaps we could add that to someone's uh, official duties to know, but to know when something, I mean, I think almost all the things that we do talk about 
uh, you know, water and sewer, that's going to be money too. A lot of things we do involve money. Um, in terms of things that people are really going to be interested in, I think anything to do with Kendrick Park pedestrian safety, those are things people are going to be really interested in. But the, uh, my question is, how do we go forward? That's really the question. And I think that um, we either have to say, we're not going to vote on this tonight, and we'll vote on it next meeting, um, or we will vote on it tonight, and we'll put a provision saying that we will um, add the words that we will revisit this in, I don't know, whether two years or three years. Um, I would say two years, um, just because things are changing. And to say, we're gonna make an effort, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna see how it goes. Um, but somehow we have to move forward. And, you know, um, so, I, I mean, I know that it's not my job to call off debate, but I'll call on you again, Shalini. Oh, Adnika, I see your hand now, I see it, yes. Okay, just my last um, comment. If this is referred, would we be able to, in addition to having our community out, engaging with the community, outreach officers just to do what they do to get the word out? Um, is there possible, I don't want to add to another agenda, but maybe it's possible to have a bit of extended public comment, you know, when this does go to town council to give community further opportunity um, to speak, or even just if it's going out, I'm sure that, you know, we would alert more people and the emails or calls will come in. Okay, there would be, there will be public comment at the town council meeting, that is true. Um, certainly there's going to be, I mean, Rob said there's going to be town outreach on any changes that because one of the things that when this, the rental registration first went in, they did a lot of public outreach and that it's time to do some of that again. Um, okay, so uh, Shalini. Um, uh, again, I think for the general discussion on outreach and when to do it and how to do it, that's a separate discussion, but just for this item, I'm not ready to vote today because I wanted to see the comparative chart. I just don't know how we're voting on these numbers, just on hearsay. So I would like to see, if possible, a comparison chart of what our neighboring towns mm -hmm. are charging with college towns. And so that's next week or next meeting. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think, if we, is it okay to add Paul, um, have Brianna or someone put this on our, on the thing, on the bulletin board, on the town website? What are the disadvantages you, of doing you, that? If you want to provide something to be posted on the bulletin board, we can accommodate that. Yeah, and just to let people get, let them know that we're going to be discussing this if they have comments. We want to hear from people, right? Yes, we do. But I, I guess I hadn't thought this was uh, more important than the other items that we want to hear uh, comments from people on. So I'm, I'm, I'm the, we've been asked to do something which I think is relatively a small increase, and there are other major things going. So I mean, we can post all of them on the bulletin board. Um, I, I'm not seeing what the stopping place is here. I'm, I, I, so that's. Yeah. And that's a discussion for the larger um, when we discuss, but just for this, like not to compare it with other things, but just to, because we are going to have a discussion on outreach. And so we don't want right. to mix up right. the two, right? Right. Um, so, um, I'm just saying, saying, okay, so the right. reason why I'm insisting on this is because we're already mm -hmm. hearing from people who are concerned about this. And uh, am I the only one who's getting those emails? Yeah. Okay. No I, mean, I'm, I live, I live having people complain about you sidewalk. Them too. I okay. Them. Yeah. And, and I'm still here and alive going into my fourth year and the sidewalks haven't been repaired. So, you know, I think there's a lot of business the town is trying to do and a lot of business the town has to do. And we're really trying to play catch up. And so we have, we have a strong agenda. So uh, I would say, let's get that chart. Michelle has said that she will help yeah. put it together. Mandy Jo will do it. And let's see if we can act expeditiously on this yes. the next meeting so we can move forward because we have so many things to do that are yes. coming at us and we can't just get stalled on this one. We're not getting stalled. They're not mutually exclusive. We can have it on the bulletin board and just invite people to come for the public comment. We're not doing a public forum. We're just letting people know. I think it's an important enough issue that people oh, should know. Okay, so we, I guess I, I hear those words. Okay, mm -hmm. Anna. 
So um, just to reflect, the emails that I was getting were more so were not about the changes that are proposed in this document that we're looking at. Um, it was if you were doing, it was about the the potential future of inspection fees. So I'm not saying that negates the need to to figure out outreach. I do just want to consider staff time, our time as we do set precedent, right? So that's that's my consideration here is is if we do this for this one, I do not think it would be fair to not do it for all the other ones. Um, I don't think that we're we should give uh, you know priority that for issues impacting landlords, we put it on the bulletin board, right? So I, I want to make sure that we're being consistent and um, and and I would ask that we consider are we equipped and ready? Who's going to handle it? Right? Who's going to who's going to write whatever the text is? Who's going to ask to be, for it to be posted? All of that. Um, in my mind, if we do something for this, it needs to be done for other discussions as well. Um, and that's that's my concern with it. And I am ready to move on from this topic as well. Okay. All right, let us move on. Um, we have uh, lunch carts and we had uh, Andy's um, memo and his including documents going back many years. Thanks, um, Michelle. Thanks, Andy Joe. Bye, Rob. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you. Everyone, I, I have asked you all thank to you. help me with these meetings, and thank you very much because I never, I always forget to do that. Um, thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. So now we're doing lunch carts, and just lunch carts is the term of trade, I guess. We're really talking about not the cart, not the man that sells hot dogs, the Brett's hot dogs, or the chopped ice with the syrup on it. We're talking about food trucks but they're called lunch carts. Is that correct, Andy? Well, I just sort of got some, you know, lumped together into one category for the sake of conversation. But for the purpose that uh, I think is left to us, it is, has to do with things that are big enough to occupy several parking places in strategic locations like next okay. to the common and the ability to reserve those spaces and how we set fees for those spaces and those sorts of issues. And uh, I, because, uh, you know, the, the guy who sells uh, food by the Unitarian Church, uh, you know, it's, he just puts his on the sidewalk, that sidewalk space. It's also an, an issue of, of import, but it's not the one that is left for us to talk about that was mm -hmm. uh, not dealt with in the prior council, prior TSO. Um, I went through the most of the information today, and I did notice one area of possible conflict. I was very interested to find out that actually specific spaces had been noted and numbered for different types of things. So that that's been done. I do see that when we have the, the permanent um, Article 14 sidewalk dining, um, that one of those spaces, I believe on uh, South Pleasant Street across from the North Common, I think is a space that's being gonna be, is being discussed as a permanent outdoor dining space. So that that's just, I just wanted to bring that in as a possible, thing where something that was, there may be a conflict between something we're going to do and something that we have done, that's all. But Andy, uh, please present. Yeah, I mean, I would not get too fixated on the list that was in uh, Jeff Kravitz's uh, uh, lengthy memo that he wrote for the select board because they never did produce the volume of right requests that were there and uh, it was well before we were into this current era where there's outdoor dining and right. trying to create spaces for the restaurants to do outdoor dining. And uh, so I, you know, I don't feel like we need to go back there unless all of a sudden tons of uh, vendors show up mm -hmm. and Okay. express an interest and then the board of license commissioners throws up their hands and comes back to us again okay um, i think we're sort of looking at it right now is um 
if a request comes along from even one, that they want to know what to do because they are not the keepers of the public way. Mm -hmm. So if you had to, like if, if, you, if this were a town council meeting and we had a draft motion sheet, what would the draft motion for this issue be? Do we, does the TSO grant the board of licenses the authority to decide? And then this is where I get confused, okay. We could do that. There are lots of things that we could do. Uh, I made one suggestion, which was in, you know, the, the in the email that I sent to mm -hmm. Evan, which was there. I mean, I think that's where the last committee was dealing with, but it was late at night that night, and uh, nobody had the uh, desire to uh, craft a revision to a. Uh, the policy on um, that late at night and uh, actually get something to propose. And we were just running out of time in the old council, which is why I uh, did what I did. So, I mean, there's one one possibility is just take, start with what, what I sent to Evan. Um, the other is to just start over again and think about other things as to, um, how you would handle it if a request came up. Uh, mine was just simply written so that it would fit within an existing policy in the simplest way. Okay, could you read that please, Andy? What else it would do is it would add to the section on uh, of the um, current public ways policy for reserving of uh, public ways dash parking, which already exists. There's short-term requests, which go to the town manager um, under the current policy as was adopted previously. And uh, there's long-term requests where we said that the town council remains keeper of the public way. And so um, if it was somebody who is uh, saying that they wanted to do it for one event, uh, it really falls under the short-term request and would be covered by town manager as responsibility. Uh, if it's a long-term request as defined greater than 14 days, either cumulative or consecutive, but not permanent, <clears throat> then there's no provision in the current policy to do it. So what I suggested was that after um, subsection I, where it says town council remains keepers of the public way for long-term requests to create a um, section two, which would cover this issue. And the language that I had uh, sent off uh, Tevin that night was, prior to taking action on the reservation of parking spaces or um, space or spaces uh, for lunch cart for more than 14 consecutive or cumulative days, the town services and outreach committee will obtain a recommendation from, and I put it in the board of license commissioners and consult with town manager, police chief, fire chief and health director. Health director is important because uh, health director has a role in um, anything that vends food. And, uh, you know, I did not run this by Paul, so I'm interested in what right. his comments would be about it if we were actually gonna seriously talk about it. But the thought was we would get that and then mm -hmm. TSO would make a recommendation to the council or act in, um, in a way that just seemed appropriate uh, for a long-term request. And a long-term request would really be somebody who comes along and says, I have a um, food truck and I'd like to come every day at uh, lunch and uh, throughout the entire season where it's warm enough to, to operate my business. And then you have a significant request. And at that point, uh, it falls under uh, the long-term request definition. Right. Um Yes, I, I, 
I have this, it's underneath a different paper. I see that. Okay. So I, when I read that, I thought, well, that sounds like a really big deal. Um, the town manager, police chief, fire chief, and health director. That's a, a lot of people. Um, but you're talking about something which is, it's kind of hard to figure out more than two weeks cumulative or consecutive, but not permanent. When does something become permanent? That is my first question. And I guess this is to Paul, you know, when is permanent? I think anything, anything over two weeks, I think is your definition of that's semi-permanent. Nothing is permanent, obviously, but that that's, I think that's the threshold that the council put. Well, they said long term, which is more than two weeks, but it's not permanent. So my question was, OK, it's maybe um, 20 weeks, maybe it's 40 weeks. Um, is it 50 weeks? When it when does it become permanent? That's my question. Well, I don't think okay. anything, it ever comes permanent, because when you take a look at the lunch cart that's um, currently in operation, the, the uh, food truck that's near the U church, uh, they just do an annual uh, application through the Board of License Commissioner to renew, and because it's okay, a sidewalk annual. placement, it comes under, it's not in the same category. And if somebody who has a actual okay. truck wants to park okay. in a parking place but do the same thing that that vendor is doing, then it falls under long-term request, but mm -hmm. Paul says, you know, there really is no such thing as permanent. We've defined right. what requires long-term requests and what belongs to the council. And so the question is, if that request ever did come along, how would the council deal with it? And as far as the number of people to uh, consult with, I started with a long laundry list figuring out that uh, by the time we got around talking about it, we could cut the list down to the whoever's deemed most essential. So it, it was a starting place for a conversation, not an ending okay. place. Okay. So you've answered my question, permanent, it has to be renewed annually, therefore it's not permanent. Okay, now I've, I've got that clear. Paul, your hand is raised. So I do also want to note that you do have a memo from Marion Walker, who's the chair of the Board of License Commissioners. She is in the audience and she has suggested alternatively to what Andy had suggested that you just delegate everything to the Board of License Commissioners because right now they feel it's disconnected from their mm -hmm. pro their licensing process. I don't okay. know if you want to invite her in or if you're- I would absolutely okay. like to do that. And, and then Paul, then I would ask to have you comment after that, okay? Um, please welcome to the meeting. Um, there she is, Marion Walker. I see the name. Are we going to see the face or just the name? Hello, Hi, how are you? Hi, Hi, I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks very much for taking this up so soon. I didn't expect it to come up so soon, but um, I'm very glad to be here and uh, I'm pleased for the discussion. Okay, so um, give us the case as to why your suggestion would be the correct way to go. So when we first took this up in the board, the license commission, this was actually brought to our attention by former counselor, Alyssa Brewer, who was on the, I believe she's on the select board. I don't have a lot of historical context for it. She, uh, Doug Slaughter, who is on the board of license commissioners also, was also on the select board. And what happened with the change of government is that the um, uh, authority for licensing and the authority over the public way was under one it was under the, the select board. They did they did all of that. When the new government comes along, those things have split. And so now the license commission has the authority to license lunch carts, but we don't have the authority, which we which the select board had formerly, to license them on the public way. So mm -hmm. um, okay. So in the uh, Alyssa said this has to be taken care of, and the simplest solution the one that we thought would be uh, streamline the whole process would be just mm -hmm. to grant the license commission the authority over um, over the licensing the public way. And it's not anywhere in Amherst. I think if you notice in, I know uh, Mandy sent me, there's a very specific places which are currently mm -hmm. allowed for right, cards. Right, right, yes. Um, okay, so in other words, you're saying that when it comes to a restaurant, a permanent structure, right? right you do all the steps of checking things out and investigating 
with the police, fire, and health director. Is that correct? That's correct. That okay. the whole, yeah, all of them that Mr. Steinberg read, we go through. All okay. Them. So, yeah. and the only difference is that now these are public way and, and they're, they're not permanent. Um, and the, we have been given the right of the public way. Okay. So you're asking us to waive our right and to grant this to the uh, license board because it is consistent with the licensing, uh, with the with the practices of what you do or something of, of that nature. Um, yes. Is that correct? I think I, yeah, that is correct. I think currently, as Mr. Steinberg said, the short term, the we just report, the town manager has the authority, and then longer term, the town council has the authority. Mm -hmm. And we're just asking, you know, asking in this this instance for this mm -hmm. um, specific that it would be moved to the the board of license commissioners. Okay. All right. That's that's clear. Um, Paul, um, what is your comment on this? I, I think. Um, what we want to do is make it as clear as possible and efficient as possible for permitting so that it's really up to the council how you want what you are it is all within your power so it's, it's what you feel comfortable delegating what you know that's what that's what this is a discussion about okay so any thoughts from members of the committee on this issue so we had we have two possibilities uh andy suggested one that we do it and call the various people. The other one is that Marion has suggested that the Board of License do this because they do this now with existing restaurants. Um, the floor is open. So I, I'll ask a question. What would we lose if the town council in this instance delegated its right to the public to control the public way to the board of license do we think that we lose something that we don't want to lose oh anika has her hand up thank you good uh i was just this question is for andy so after hearing marion walker do you do you feel the same way um how do you feel um no, I'm, I'm certainly open to either suggestion as to how to go about doing this. Uh, I think that the last TSO was concluding with the discussion of what it would look like if we built it into the current policy of the, of the public way. And so I just threw together that proposal for incentive Evan, but it never came back to the committee. Mm -hmm before the old committee and the old council dissolved. So uh, that has left it left as sort of an extra piece. Um, as far as what the difference would be, I think that you just have to um, ask you all of ourselves as uh, counselors, um, whether a decision to um, give up one or two parking places to um, something that is a um, fairly significant long term because it say it was uh you know five or six days a week um from april to october was what the request was um you know how different is that from the discussion of giving up um, two spaces for any other purpose for a long period of time and um, how do we, you know, do we want to um, keep that to the council or do we want to give it away? I think it's a fair discussion to have. Uh, that's all I can say. Okay. Um, well, my comment is that I think we have an awful lot to do on the town council. Um, and I, but I would like to know the next. So let's just say we give it to give the right to the board of license and then something comes up and some people start complaining and they don't like it. Now, a license is renewed every year. Do we then um, as, a, as a committee discuss this and then go to the board of licenses and saying we've had a lot of complaints. Uh, people feel it's unfair that this food truck is parked there so long. It's impacting some of the brick and mortar stores. Um, either we don't want them to have it that long or we'd rather have them be at a different place. You know, 
do we have any recourse or have we given it up and it's gone forever? Okay, Paul, your hand is up. So the decision, it, this is the power that lies within, under the charter with you, the control of the public ways. If you want to delegate, just in your current public way policy is that you can delegate what you want. You can delegate mm -hmm. this and you can always take it the power back. You've delegated some to the town manager. If you don't like what the town manager is doing with that authority, you can always rescind it on a moment's notice. Okay, so that is definitely clarifying. And, and Marion, did you have your hand up? No. No, okay. All right, so then it's really something that we can do. We can see how it goes. And if we say, this is not, we don't wanna do this. We'd rather take the time and effort because, you know, as Shalini says, people complain to us and, you know, we hear the complaints and we wanna act upon them. We could take it back. Okay, so that calms me on that. Okay, Anna. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward with this. Uh, what I'm struggling with is right in my head or on paper, writing a motion about it. Um, mm -hmm. anyone have support for me here? Cause I'm ready. I'm. Oh, I, I right love the back. idea that you might make a motion. Okay. That's really I'm happy great. to make a motion, but I don't know what language to use. If there are folks that would like to keep talking, please keep talking. Um, okay. Cool. Any help with a motion? from anyone here i'm looking right now oh thank you yes good we can take back our delegation okay so so we can make some decisions and it's not like the whole world is going to stop or end because we can change our minds okay that's We're not I launching rocket good. ships okay uh anna i'm not ready yet not ready yet okay <laughs> sorry um, does anyone else any comments? I think it looks like that we are at, it's 12 of nine, ready to kind of come to grips with this one. So that's very good. Um, Sorry, Anna, I can't read fast enough. I think it's, a, it's going to be a recommendation to change the policy on control and regulation of the public ways to delegate the authority to the board of license commissioners but i just don't have elegant words this quickly um but it could be a recommendation like that and then the council can uh refine those words when it comes back up to the council all right so it is that i am moving that tso recommends we change the policy of public ways to delegate the responsibility for the uh for lunch cart siting, lunch cart permitting. For to, you have to list, list the, the group. Hang on, yeah, hang on. Temporary Sorry. reservations. Okay, so but Athena, is it permitting? It's not permitting for the lunch carts no. themselves. It's it's the reservations for the parking spaces that go okay. along with them. Andy, right. correct me if I'm wrong. Thank right. you, Andy. Thank you. So, okay, so I'm going to start over. Uh, I move we recommend to the town council that a change in the policy of public ways delegating the responsibility of lunch cart reservations, short term lunch cart reservations to the Board of License Commissioners. Right, but I think we should say, short? should do the definition. Uh, it's request, what it has here is a request for long term, comma, temporary oh, reservations, parent greater than 14 days, either cumulative or consecutive, comma, but not permanent. End of paren. I think we have to. Have you that. have it written. <laughs> it's a different. I I I, I have those you have words, it written. A, with a different with a different outcome. So, okay. you, what, what I have does not include the part that we delegated to the okay. board of licenses. Okay. I will try uh, one more time. If someone else would like to do Andy, this. sentences Paul, from Paul. Paul, Paul has, Paul has his hand up. So, yeah. may I suggest that you just say you delegate the location of lunch carts to the board of license commissioners um, and you know and just leave it at that because that's what you're really doing you're saying wherever they want to put on the sidewalk or in the street right. and it's and that's how it's defined in the sort of rule re regulations that we've talked about before with the lunch carts okay, okay. so you're combining with what they're already doing so that basically lunch carts right okay um i think that the words on um long-term temporary are useful so that somebody doesn't think that somebody who has that right to have that forever, that the, the, the fact that the license are renewed annually, I think is uh, a comfort, you know, so that 
if something doesn't work out, that that person can't say, I have this permanently, because they don't. Well, okay, I didn't catch it. Someone else can make the motion. Sorry. Um, I lost one other question that we have, and that is, uh, uh, and that didn't really deal with in my motion either, and that is a question of uh, if, if it's parking spaces, does the lunch cart vendor pay the equivalent of the parking uh, meter fees for the time that they are using meter spaces on the street? Well, if they don't, then the town has lost revenue and is not gaining any. So I, I would think they would have to include that. But yes, yes Marion. Yeah, we do have in our regulations, they do compensate the town for the, the parking space. Great, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we do not have, uh, we have our measure, Paul has suggested that um, delegate location of lunch carts um, to the board of uh, licenses. And that was period, right? And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The council has already delegated authority for lunch carts to the board. It's really the parking that goes along with the lunch carts that we're talking about here. So okay. I think what I had is to recommend a change to the policy regarding control and regulation of the public ways to delegate authority to the board of license commissioners for long term temporary parking reservations for lunch carts. So where did the parking, I didn't hear, can you read that again? I didn't hear parking fees in there, but I, I like the rest of it. Maybe it was there and I didn't hear it. I didn't, I didn't have anything on the parking fees because the whole delegation of authority would go to the board. So to the motion would be to recommend a change to the policy regarding control and regulation of public ways to delegate authority to the board of license commissioners for long-term temporary parking reservations for lunch cart. Does that do it, Paul and Andy? Yeah, as long as it's clear that it's both sidewalks and roads, because sidewalks are also the public way. And so it's wherever a lunch cart is located would be with the Board of License Commissioners. The Board of License Commissioners already has authority for okay. lunch carts. Got yeah, it. so Thank they you. have they have reservation of sidewalks for lunch carts already. Okay, so yeah. it's just a, just the road, public way. Got it. It's the just street the parking. parking places. At least that's how Andy has been telling it to me. This is the street parking places and the fact that, and that you also mentioned a different thing though. You said they might feed the meter while they were there, but there was also stipulations in some parking places that no one could park there for more than say two hours or three hours, but they would be breaking that if they're gonna be there the whole day. I, I know that was something that you had brought up a couple of times. Is that dealt with in this? I think it would be dealt with in this. I think that uh, what, Athena has crafted and okay. is, matches what I I don't want to put words in your mouth, Anna, but uh, I think it matches what Anna was trying to do. No one yeah. knows what I was trying to do. Athena, could you either repeat it and speak slower or put it on the screen? I tried to catch it, but I know I missed it and I'd rather not rehash from the start. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, Thank you. I can try this real quick. I'm sorry for sharing draft minutes. No, thank you. I appreciate it. So it's to recommend a change yep. to the town council policy regarding control and regulation of the public ways. Let's say to delegate authority to the board of license commissioners for long-term temporary parking reservations for lunch carts. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it now that. Athena helped me, helped write it. <laughs> Athena did write it. Um, okay, so I move to recommend a change to the town council policy regarding uh, control and regulation of the public ways to delegate authority to the board of license commissioners for long-term temporary parking reservations for lunch carts. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Anika seconded. Anika seconded. Okay. Uh, I will now call the question. Um, okay. Uh, Shalini. Yes. Okay. Anna. Yes. Anika. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Okay. So it is unanimous. Five, zero. Very good. We have dealt with lunch carts. Right. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you for coming. Oh, it, it was very useful. I'm, I'm glad you came. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So now we're looking at the agenda and we've got, where is the agenda? Street closures for summer dining, carryover member. Okay. And I do believe that, uh, I don't know, is Mandy Joe, are you still here? Um, let me just take a peek at, is there any participants? Attending? No, she's, she's not here right now. Okay, okay, right, okay. Um, Paul, you had wanted to speak on this. Yeah, so the, the way I read it is there, someone had recommended that the North Pleasant Street be closed to the public uh, to put to, to vehicular traffic. That doesn't, um, isn't really possible because that is the main uh, north-south route through the center of town. Also, our fire department and EMS is located right in the center of town. They need to be getting in and out of that station. When we close that road for the bid block party, we relocate all of our emergency vehicles out of that area to a, to a different location so they can still move. That's not to do that during the summer. It's just not feasible. Well, I, I believe there's also the problem of our big road project or the state's big road project on Route 9 and the detours and the, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really challenging this summer um, getting around town. Um, any questions or comments? Anyone have their hand up here? Um, we could do we could discuss whether we can do it more than the bid block party you know if we, that that one thing is this was just a suggestion okay so it could be a question of can we do it more than one time in the summer could we maybe do it two times maybe do it three times okay i see i recognize you shalini um i was just thinking and i'm just geographically challenged so i don't know but are there other areas that we could block up maybe not this main street are there other like like a whole block like block uh, boltwood or i don't know is are there no. any other areas like in northampton you have all these little alleyways where they have places or do we have anything like that so we don't have a place like that. We've looked at that. I mean, the, the, we don't, you need a location that is adjacent to the restaurants. I mean, the idea of this is, mm -hmm. I guess, is what you're saying is to have restaurants be able to sit outside like they have on in Northampton, which is very pleasant. Yes, yes. We don't really have that. What we, we, you know, when restaurants have been asked to participate in something like that, it's, if it's too far from their establishment, they're not going to do it. They're not going to mm -hmm. run back and forth. Yes. Um, we have done it successfully on Boltwood Plaza. Johnny's has worked outside. Be um, right, right. That was uh, Pasta Basta has had outdoor dining. Um, other restaurants were offered it. A lot of them tried it mm -hmm. and abandoned it pretty quickly. It's it's a mm -hmm. lot of legwork and, you know, maintaining okay. the outdoor spaces is hard. The way they do it in Northampton is that there are sort of common common areas too that people can access. Mm -hmm. Right, so the, the question, I think somebody raised the issue that there's difficulty with staff. And when, if you're doing this, you have the staff in the restaurant and the staff at the other place. Mm -hmm. So this is where a food cart would come in. Okay, Anna. Uh, so the other part, of, it seems very clear to me that, and from the get-go it seemed very very clear to me that closing north pleasant street wasn't going to work um so but the second part of the memo is the continuation of outdoor dining is that settled right i believe it was settled so i just yes so you have extended article 14 yeah and we're working closely with the bid not many restaurants are interested in pursuing that this year because we did it last year because the restaurants weren't open and this is a way for to get people to dine in their establishments we have some who want to continue it and for those who want to we're working with them so um you know fresh side uh, la vera cruzana uh, amherst coffee um, Bistro 63 might, mm -hmm. the other restaurants kind of, even though they had space last year, they abandoned their spaces when they were, when the indoor dining opened up, they just, it wasn't mm -hmm. useful to them. So we don't want to dedicate, we were finding ourselves dedicating parking spaces to, to tables that weren't be, ever being used. So, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we are working through the bid, they you know, were asking the restaurants to be, to show a commitment to operating it. You know, we, 
uh, we opened up areas for lone wolf and then and they just didn't you know they use it for a while mm -hmm. and then it again it's, it's up to the rest of the business owner to decide if they can do it or not so mm -hmm. i think we're, we're pretty actively working with the bid to say which ones are working and which ones aren't great okay. i just wanted to make sure i wasn't ignoring that i thought it had been settled but thank you yeah yeah you're right you do you do see like amherst coffee really seems to always like that have there's always somebody at the table on the sidewalk um so I think that's I think that's a good approach, seeing who really wants it, and then uh, and they'll want it if it has worked out, and if people like to use it, like to sit there. Um, on a hand, still up? No. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this issue? Um, okay. So then we'll come back to the street closures. Um, I had asked you, Paul, is it possible to close the street more than once in the summer? Um, I, I definitely understand why we cannot close it in any kind of permanent way in the summer. Um, your arguments are good, but is it is it such a big deal like with moving all the trucks that like once is really all they really want to do and they say please please we can't do it again? No, it, you can you can close it, but there just won't be anybody in the street. That, you know, you need. I mean, for an event. I mean, ha if, if another event, just, it has. To oh, be sure. That they would. They could. They could do it for an event, but that's the bid didn't even want to do it a bit an event last year. So oh, okay. if someone wanted to do an event and they were prepared to take on the organizational task, it's a pretty big or it takes months for the bid to organize that one night. Okay. All right. So you're not saying that it can't that it cannot be done. You're just saying it can't be done on a regular basis without really tremendous dislocation and extra work for the town and, and maybe it wouldn't even be safe. So you, you would need a proponent, someone who's saying, here's what I want to do. And, yeah. and that means all the abutting restaurants would have to say, not all, but we'd really look to them and say, is this going to help your business or hurt it? Mm -hmm. um, Shalini. Random idea, but um, just putting it out there because with TSO, uh, when we spoke with, I spoke with Tony and Nancy, and we talked about, you know, welcoming students and making them feel more welcome. Uh, one of the ideas was that we could have as a town council, like, you know, how we did for the India Pakistan event. It was a smaller event, but it was really well received. But if we did something for welcoming all the students where the town council does this proclamation at the thing and we like welcome and then you have the UMass band or something like make it like a really celebratory event. I mean that just popped in my head when we were talking about closing. I'm not saying we'll mm -hmm. close the street for that, but just that's something. And when do we discuss something like that? Mm -hmm. Because I think that would be really cool where we uh and we get this the restaurants involved and all of them or the cinema and everyone like involved in welcoming the students and making it like yay we love you come back and be good citizens and neighbors so the chamber organizes the adventure into amherst i believe it's the chamber who does it someone has to take it on it's an enormous organizational task and so some you know it could be a counselor doing it it could be the bid or the chamber they would have to say, yes, I want to do this activity because it's a lot of organization. It could be the university who organizes it. Mm -hmm. Our yeah, count I, staff could not take that on. For, for no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I'm not asking. I think if, if uh, I think Tony was and Nancy were pretty, ha I mean, they just want, I mean, if the town council can do the proclamation part and then we can have the bid and chamber kind of coordinate with the restaurants, but then have Tony and all do the other part of it i think it could work with no burden on the town staff minimal i mean there would be some because they'll have to broadcast and all but minimal okay anna okay i'm channeling my inner Alyssa brewer and saying shalini i think if you want to chase that idea do it but i don't think we can talk about it because this was about outdoor specifically closing the street for summer outdoor dining. oh right yes future agenda item okay all right um so um do we need a motion on this one, Paul? Or do we just need an understanding? You do, you do have a memo from the CRC that handed this off to you. Um, mm -hmm. So you might, I don't know, Athena or Andy might have a sense to, to can, this. Go ahead. Um, I, if there's not a decision that you're gonna recommend the council make, then you can just report back to the council about your conversation yeah. and that you're not recommending any change at this time. Okay. Is that suitable to the group? That we okay, Andy. Let's hear what you have to say. 
Yeah, I think that's suitable to the group. I just think when you write it up to make sure that you include the organizational part and the burden on the fire department is just being something that uh, we see as a barrier and uh, include that in the report that you make on behalf of the committee and just be done with it. Mm -hmm. And in some future time after the fire department has been relocated and the fire department building has become a uh, theater and art center, we can then think about this again. You know, if any of us happens to be on the council at the time, it's going to be a brewery, Dorothy. I don't know. If, uh, that oh, was my... <laughs> the fire department is going to be. A I'm brewery. kidding. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. You said theater. I'm you saying mean firehouse beer. OK, oh, sounds good. OK, uh, Anika. I was just going to send my inner Elisa Bureau after Anna with that one. <laughs> Point of order. Beer was not on the agenda. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that we will just re, we have discussed it. We will report it. Um, and um, it is um, eight minutes after nine. Um, does anyone want to make a move to adjourn? Or I gather the chair can just adjourn. Is that correct? Public comment. Oh, public comment. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, stalwart public. Uh, do you have any, anyone want to raise their hand and make a comment? Um, Tracy, I, you emailed me at a time when I couldn't respond today about the TAC memo. And if you want to say something about that, um, feel free. And Dorothy, I should note that you also have minutes to do if you want to do that quickly. Oh, okay. We discussed the minutes I, and the correction to the, uh, the minutes are here. Okay, great. We, did anyone have any comments or changes on the minutes or can we in fact uh, accept the minutes? Okay, then let's have a motion to um, accept the minutes from someone. Well, then I will move that we accept the minutes. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay, and I call the question and uh, Anika? Yes. Okay, Dorothy, yes. Andy? Yes. Okay, Shalini? Abstain. Okay, and Anna? Yes. Yes, okay, the minutes have passed four yeses, one abstention, and um, we have done that. Um, okay, are we now ready for public comment? Okay, um, anyone who wants to speak, you can raise your hand. I've got it set so I can see you if you do. Okay, then I think that we could adjourn the meeting. Is that correct? Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. Bye-bye.